Hello everyone. So, today we will start the combined heat and mass transmission and its uh, relation with clothing comfort. Till now what we have discussed the heat transmission and uh, moisture vapor and liquid transmission separately and it is very important to know their transmission characteristics through clothing to understand the comfort. Okay. But today we will discuss few phenomena those who are interlinked actually heat and mass transmission are interlinked phenomena. So, these are the dynamic state condition in dynamic state what we will see that uh, the heat and moisture transmission takes place together we cannot separate out and uh, the clothing comfort like uh, heat uh, transmission warm feeling and cool feeling those are actually related to the dynamic state because our most of the cases when we move when our body posture changes though the heat and mass transmission cannot take place in static condition steady state condition those are in dynamic condition we will we will discuss the issues related to dynamic uh, transmission then the transmission in hygroscopic material basically hygroscopic material most of the hygroscopic material after absorption of moisture the they release actually they release heat. So, the moisture transmission or absorption and heat are interlinked. So, this phenomena we will discuss how hygroscopic materials are interacting with moisture and to release the heat okay. this segment we will discuss and then the buffering temperature buffering and chilling aspects they are related with the heat and mass transmission the moisture absorption that is uh, and then it uh, sometime uh, it uh, causes a chilling that uh, discomfort uh, related to chilling this we will discuss clothing thermal insulation during sweating. So, during sweating the clothing normally actually the release heat uh, very quickly. So, this part we will discuss then uh, the comfort discomfort related to dampness dampness uh, related discomfort irrespective of the temperature it is uh, it creates our uh, severe discomfort if the microclimate is damp. So, this are actually the dampness is related again with the heat and mass transmission the clamminess. So, again clamminess it is a high humidity humidity condition this uh, in the microclimate that we will discuss even in the atmosphere if there is a high humidity we sometime feel clamminess and in that state how the temperature uh, temperature or heat transmission takes place and temperature rise takes place that we will discuss and surface temperature of clothing during high activity this we will discuss and this is related with the again with the moisture absorption because uh, most of the hygroscopic fiber are actually uh, the re after absorption of heat they release heat. So, if again microclimate thickness if it changes the heat and mass transmission also changes this aspect also we will discuss here and parameters what there are various parameters which actually are used to express heat and mass transmission together. So, till now what we have discussed the parameters were are separately which ex, which are used to express the heat transmission or mass transmission. So, here we will discuss the combined parameters and then clothing ventilation how the clothing ventilation affect the heat and mass transmission this aspects we will discuss here. So, we will first start with the that uh, heat and mass transmission uh, the phenomena the fabric layers layer is uh, characterized by uh, two types of resistance one is heat resistance another is the 
moisture vapor resistance that is moisture vapor permeability. Okay. So, resistance to dry heat that is insulation which is actually dependent on it increases with the increase in thickness of the enclosed air layer. This thickness of enclosed air layer it may be within the structure or may be outside the structure. Outside the structure means it is a, a microclimate okay. and within the structure means it is within the pores of the yarns or fabrics. Thickness of the fabric layer, so higher thickness means higher entrapment or higher more materials are there. So, that will also affect the dry heat transmission, even higher more material, more number of fibers in the cross section or across the plane, which restrict the, the radiative heat loss. So, that also it affects and dryness of the material the dry material, wet material that means that it loses its insulation. So, its conductivity is more. So, dryness of material is also directly related with the dry heat insulation. Coming to the moisture vapor transmission, it is generally more dependent on fabric parameter, but it decreases with increase in thickness of air layer that means, the uh, uh, moisture vapor permeability for thicker fabric, it is uh, moisture vapor permeability will be less. There are uh, various factors that we have already discussed in the uh, last segment. Uh, basically, if the micro pores are uh, larger in size, that uh, diffusion may uh, it will be slower. Okay. So, this uh, are it uh, decreases with the increase in thickness of air layer. Now, coming to the dynamic state in most of the conditions, most of the time the clothed human body is in dynamic state while we are walking, we are doing activities. So, changes in environmental variables. So, our atmosphere continuously changes its temperature, relative humidity, everything changes even wind, uh, wind uh, uh, speed. So, that this changes in environmental condition always affect the heat and mass transmission. So, this dynamic state it is always it we apart from the standard atmosphere standard chamber climatic chamber or standard test chamber normal environment is always changing and uh, that directly affect the heat and mass transmission, we have to understand this one. Then air enclosed within the clothing that is in microclimate always in under dynamic condition, even when we are sitting, even if we may we move little movement that total air enclosed enclosed air volume will change, their, their total structure inter uh, that is uh, the microclimate uh, total uh, contour will change. So, that will affect the heat and mass transmission and forced convection. So, when we move, when uh, maybe when we are walking, we are doing active activity. So, that uh, fabric actually move around our body and that enclosed air actually it get pumped out and uh, fresh air uh, comes. So, that is a forced convective movement of air takes place okay, through the opening of the clothing and the enclosed air transmit directly through the fabric layer to the environment. So, that uh, also it is uh, it takes place it is uh, most of the cases and this air exchange reduces the insulation. So, as air the steel air um, moves away, so it takes moisture and that means moisture vapor permeability is also increases due to the forced convection. So, uh, that total dynamics will change. So, that, that means in most of the cases our uh, the comfort feeling are totally different than what we, uh, tr we try to get, we try to get the data in st steel condition okay, in the in uh, stand standard atmospheric condition. So, the, this, this is due to the dynamic nature of this dynamic state of the of uh, our clothing and our body. 
So, the final exchange of heat and moisture vapor is dependent on the level and pattern of activity and the size of the opening. So, if our activity is more or if it is say wind condition, the to total dynamic the heat and mass change will be different. So, wind and physical movement decrease the insulation of air sticking to the outside of the surface of the world. So, when our the wind is blowing, so our the steel air which is uh, just outside the clothing that will move out. So, that will help in better forced convection. Okay. So, with the large opening in the clothing structure, the wind penetrates inside the clothing and changes the, the moisture, moisture uh, relative humidity and temperature. So, heat loss increases. So, if the opening uh, size is more, the forced air will enter due to uh, the wind blowing and it will decrease the temperature that means, heat loss will increase. So, in extreme conditions like in strong wind, sometime what happened? Our cloth, clothing may get compressed that means, it will take out the excess steel air from inside and thus the in strong wind automatically the, uh, the insulation reduces. So, for if we see so all these conditions they are totally related with the heat and mass transmission. So, if it is strong wind there will be uh, some uh, effect, if it is light wind the effect will be basically from it will take away the steel air from outside. So, if it is strong wind, it will compress uh, the fabric. So, these things are actually changing and the this is basically we have to understand, we cannot test, we cannot actually simulate these things, but if we understand this phenomena, then we can predict the comfort characteristics. Okay. This we have discussed and next is that again if we continue, the insulation of clothing also reduces if the clothing gets soaked with the sweat and water. So, that automatically it will reduce the thermal resistance if it is soaked, because uh, the water as we have discussed the water uh, the thermal transmission through water is very fast, it is the um, that is resistance of air is much higher than the water. Okay. The evaporative heat dissipation from wet clothing can be significant uh, actually significant extent especially when air velocity is high. Okay. This is due to forced convection when the person comes to rest. So, after heavy activity if the person comes to rest what will happen? He will actually stop sweating and then the evaporative heat loss will uh, take place. So, his heat generation is less but heat loss will be very high. So, that is why he will feel immediately cold. So, unwanted cooling will take place. So, this we can typical example is a soccer, soccer player when he is coming out from the field. So, they, he will start feeling cold because of the, the less activity and the evaporative heat loss. So, this dynamic heat and moisture vapor transmission characteristics of clothing cannot be expressed in a single term. So, because we have to understand that the steady state condition of heat transmission separately, moisture transmission separately, this will not work actually. Those heat and moisture vapor transmission, it is important just to understand the phenomena, but if we try to predict the clothing comfort, we have to actually think in different direction. So, and also we have to see that our body is in dynamic condition and activity level we have to understand, then we can predict the comfort state. Now, so combined heat and moisture interaction if we uh, try to see here, the moisture transmission through a textile material is not only associated with the mass transmission process, but the transmission of heat must also be taken into account. So, so moisture transmission it, if we see 
it is a if uh, in earlier segment we have seen the moisture transmission separately. It is not the only the uh, moisture is getting transmitted, it is not the sweat is getting transmitted, it is not the moisture vapor is getting transmitted. Along with the moisture heat is also transmitted that this phenomena we have to actually understand very clearly. So, that means, heat and moisture transmission in hygroscopic material is inseparable. Okay. Actually, it is a they cannot be separated if we particularly if we consider a hygroscopic material when mass transmission takes place the heat transmission you have to also consider otherwise we will not be able to predict the comfort fill. Okay. So, that is very important we cannot separate. It. So, now if we see the hygroscopic material let us see uh, example is cotton. So, during the transmission of water molecule through the hygroscopic material the water molecule gets absorbed by the molecule. So, then as soon as it absorbs the moisture it will release the heat which is known as heat of absorption or heat of sorption. So, this this phenomena after absorption it releases heat that means, automatically the moisture transmission and heat transmission comes into picture understanding of heat transmission and moisture transmission we have to um, it is actually it is uh, necessary to understand this phenomena. So, due to the production of heat what happens the temperature of the cloth increases surface temperature temperature of the material increases and it affects the moisture vapor transmission also it reduces the moisture vapor transmission. Okay. So, due to increase in the surface temperature with the increase in humidity. So, what happened? The heat transmission efficiency, efficiency of the material increases because the hygroscopic material absorb moisture become wet or moisture content increases. So, thermal conductivity automatically increases. So, that is how it is uh, interrelated. The heat transmission process also comes into play during the moisture transmission that is what we have discussed under the dynamic condition due to phase change of water molecule. So, one thing is that it is actually when hygroscopic material absorb moisture it releases the heat of absorption that you have to understand. When hygroscopic material absorb moisture the thermal conductivity of the total fabrics total structure increases that we have to understand and also another parameter is that when it actually changes its phase that means, from liquid phase to vapor phase okay, when it gets evaporated. So, that latent heat of evaporation it takes away from the body from the cloth. So, that we get cooled. So, this all this interlinked phenomena ultimately affect the clothing sensation. So, the coupling effect between moisture diffusion and heat transmission depends on the following properties. When moisture actually diffuses through fabric, so th these are the factors what are the properties on which this uh, phenomena depends the moisture sorption capacity of the material. So, if the moisture gets absorbed through the uh, by the material, so that will affect the this heat and mass transmission characteristic. Let us see one polyester fabric another is cotton fabric. In case of polyester fabric let us assume polyester is totally hygroscopic hydrophobic. Okay. So, that hydro, hydrophobic fiber it is not absorbing the moisture moisture is transmitting through the fabric structure by diffusion. Okay. So, in that case in case of cotton on the other hand when it absorbs moisture it releases the, the heat of absorption. The total phenomena of heat transmission will change and after absorption of moisture when it actually it uh, uh, releases moisture it gets, uh, gets uh, evaporated it 
it uh, takes away the latent heat. In, in case of uh, uh, polyester, it is not happening. And uh, fiber diameter also. So, higher fiber diameter means lower specific surface area and that means, it is uh, moisture vapor permeability will change that will ultimately affect this heat and moisture sensation. Water vapor diffusion coefficient. So, if the moisture water vapor diffusion coefficient is high that means, the fiber will actually diffuse the moisture quickly. Okay. Density it uh, is uh, depending on the density of the structure and also the fiber and heat absorption. So, heat of higher heat absorption of fiber will give warmth feeling when we uh, the it absorbs moisture like wool, wool fiber has got very high heat of absorption. So, that, that means, the, with the change in humidity level wool gives warmth. Okay. So, the heat of weighting of cellulose fiber depends on various factors mainly it is a crystallinity. So, it uh, the it decreases proportionally with the increase in degree of crystallinity. So, that heat absorption if the cellulosic fiber has got higher crystallinity it is heat absorption will reduces. Okay. Now, another phenomena which is temperature buffering and chilling this phenomena is again linked with heat and moisture transmission of clothing. So, what is buffering? So, these two phenomena are associated with the simultaneous heat and moisture vapor transmission through fabric. There would be a buffering effect at the starting point at the onset of the perspiration in hot climate. Okay. So, in hot climate and humid climate the perspiration will start and that will actually will give the buffering effect. Whereas, in case of cold climate it would result in post exercise chilling. Effect. So, in hot climate we will start sweating and that will give us warmth. So, before we come out of that uh, out to the environment in hot environment we will start getting hot feeling. So, it is giving a buffering effect. Okay. So, it buffering effect increases actually it is actually it is experienced due to the perspiration in hot climate as we have discussed. In hot climate we actually feel that it is warmth sudden increase in relative humidity in the climate fabric also absorbs moisture and generate heat. So, it uh, releases heat this gives rise to the thermostatic or buffering action of the person. So, before he is going out to the hot climate he the cloth also actually prepared him with the buffering effect that, that means, it is uh, cloth has become warm okay, so that it is he is not suddenly getting a shock. So, it is it gives some buffering effect. So, in we will see in opposite case also it happens. Okay. So, hygroscopic fiber absorbs moisture and release heat. So, buffering from sudden chilling. So, this is this actually this phenomena we can see in extreme cold climate climate zone where suppose it is a it is a snowing a person in a hot and dry climate at inside a room when he is coming out what happens this has significant impact on the heat balance and thermal properties of wearer experiencing a sudden change from warm and dry atmosphere to cold and humid as atmosphere. What happened when as soon as he is uh, going out the cloth suppose a woolen cloth he is wearing and as soon as he is going out in cold and humid uh, environment the fabric absorbs wool absorb moisture and releases ex, releases sufficient quantity of the heat of absorption. That means, for some time he at least that cloth is protecting him in he is not getting sudden cold shock. Okay. 
reduces the working performance okay the chilling effect is also associated with the exercise sweating in cold climate okay so in earlier case we have seen that when he is going out the heat is uh, generated and even in the cold climate extreme cold when it is there and it is a um, uh, sweating high humidity he is feeling warm due to heat of soft sun and the chilling effect is there that means chilling effect means when the cloth is wet his he will actually the body will release the heat very fast. So, it is just opposite. So, the chilling effect is associated with the after exercise sweating in cold climate. So, after suppose after walking someone stops. So, this reduces the working performance because the he will start uh, releasing heat at a very high rate he will feel cold. So, it may cause hypothermia due to excessive cold. So, water vapor may get condensed and it reduces the thermal insulation. So, all this phenomena may also take place if we actually the cloth is wet due to sweating. So, that, that means here again we are saying that chilling effect is associated with the heat and mass transmission. In case of only if there if we see here the person is not sweating that means he will he will not feel the chilling effect. This chilling phenomena is associated with the heat and mass transmission ok. When the water vapor that is perspiration comes into contact with the cold wall that is the cloth then it gets condensed and reduces the thermal sensation that is the, that is chilling basically. So, it it is uh, related with the again heat and mass transmission. So, both this buffering and chilling are mainly dependent on atmospheric temperature and humidity condition. So, this if we if this uh, changes like atmospheric temperature is if it is hot and if it is dry the buffering effect will be different. If it is cold dry it will be different if it is cold humid it will be different. So, this buffering and chilling uh, it is mainly depending on the atmospheric condition, the activity of the person, the type of clothing, type of clothing material. So, these things are related, but effectively this buffering and chilling they are interrelated and uh, they are related with the heat and mass transmission. Now, next is the again another phenomena that is the thermal insulation during sweating. The clothing thermal insulation is used to determine the heat stress of the clothed person. So, if the insulation is high in hot environment that means, it is he will have higher heat stress. So, in hot in environment and in a humid environment the it is a it is a very difficult ok. Uh, the it will feel totally uncomfortable. The amount of moisture vapor evaporation mainly the uh, that is to maintain the thermal uh, balance ok of the body ok. So, that the thermal balance is actually maintained by the moisture evaporation and if the evaporation is low that means, in humid climate in hot and humid climate if the evaporation is low then he will not be able to evaporate the moisture ok. And also it depends on the the rate of sweating and skin wetness. So, this thermal clothing insulation it drops with the rate of sweating and if the skin is wet again thermal insulation will drop and the total heat transmitted through clothing is commonly considered as the sum of dry transmission and evaporative heat transmission. So, this to dry transmission means conduction, convection and radiation plus evaporative heat transmission and evaporative heat transmission is the phenomena which is linked with the mass transmission ok. The thermal insulation of non perspiring and perspiring conditions are totally different ok. So, 
the clothing thermal insulation decreases during perspiration that we have seen and in the as compared to non perspiring condition the it reduces uh, 2 to 8 percent and that reduction is mainly due to the conductive heat loss ok. Thermal so, amount of reduction varies from 2 to 8 percent depending on the water accumulation. If the water accumulation is high, if the uh, person is sweating uh, profusely then it may go up to 8 to 10 percent reduction. And the heat loss greatly increase with the sweating due to evaporative heatless also. So, it is basically the uh, if the sweat gets evaporated then heat loss is also increasing. Now, coming to the phenomena of dampness. So, most of the cases we feel that if it is a damp irrespective of the temperature of the environment we feel discomfort. It is a very common discomfort. Okay. So, moisture in clothing has been widely recognized as one of the most important factors contributing to the discomfort sensation. So, it is it actually main factor which contribute the uh, discomfort as sensation. The sensation of dampness is related to the amount of sweat accumulation in the microclimate okay, and the clothing. So, it may be in the liquid form or may be in the vapor form. So, higher humidity in the microclimate or higher moisture content in the clothing will give the dampness sensation which is which is very um, which creates a discomfort sensation. So, moisture in clothing means discomfort. So, more the hygroscopicity of the fiber more will be the moisture gain by the fiber and in turn the fabric that means, the fabric if it is if it absorbs the moisture the fiber that microclimate will be little bit dry and people we will feel a total comfort sensation. When the fabric is wet and it comes into contact with our skin the temp it drops the temperature. So, one is the sensation the dampness sensation another is the temperature drop due to the wet uh, cloth that is the chilling uh, product. So, chilling sensation is there and also in the dampness the skin temperature drops increases when it is uh, coming into contact with the wet fabric and the temperature drop increases with the increase in hygroscopicity of the fiber. The cotton is cooler in touch at high humidity that is basically due to the hygroscopicity of the fiber. Also the temperature drop is influenced significantly by the degree of uh, the fabric skin contact. Okay. So, that we have also seen in uh, cold touch warm touch. So, if the fabric uh, structure is such that higher contact area higher surface contact area is there with the skin that same fabric will that the uh, fabric made of the same of same fiber will give higher coolness ok. Contact to the like a uh, uh, fabric uh, made of say wool fiber, wool fiber in high humidity some uh, gives actually the warmth in nature. So, this warm nature with the of wool fiber and cotton gives a cooler touch there are uh, combined factors one is that wool is actually heat of absorption is high in case of wool it gives automatic warmth and also the wool fiber has got its crimp natural crimp very high crimp. So, that result less contact area. So, that gives the wool fiber fabric made of wool is naturally its warmth even if it is the high humidity condition. Now, dampness that in ambient condition such as temperature and relative humidity influence the skin temperature drop significantly. So, if the ambient temperature is high what will, what will happen and uh, that is a close to the skin if it is high the skin temperature drop decreases it is obvious because of the lower difference in temperature. 
So, it decreases the temperature difference prior to the contact and similar that, that is the smaller the temperature gradient that means, less will be the heat transmission. So, that is why temperature drop it is um, uh, not there. Okay. As the ambient temperature uh, relative humidity increases, so what will happen? The difference in moisture content between the fabric and the environment decreases. So, because initially the moisture content in the fabric was high that is why it gets evaporated. So, as the humidity in the environment increases, so it will result less evaporation. So, less evaporative heat transmission will be there. Okay. So, the fabric will uh, the less that means, uh, less evaporative cooling will be there, the we will feel warm and humid okay. and dampness sensation will be there. So, with the increase in ambient humidity we will feel dampness okay, because of less evaporative less evaporation of the of moisture entrapped in the microclimate. The difference between various type of fiber like cotton, polyester and wool if it is there it is at much higher when the ambient condition is ambient humidity is less. So, at lower humidity so at 50 60 percent humidity the difference in sensation of dampness is high in case of say polyester, cotton or wool, but when the humidity is high say 100 percent relative it is a saturated. So, that the difference in dampness sensation for cotton, polyester and wool will be negligible, because the phenomena of moisture transmission, moisture evaporation will not there irrespective of the fiber whether it is absorbing more or it is not absorbing. So, all the fibers say cotton will also give dampness at high humidity, but when we are talking about the normal humidity say 60 percent, 50 percent humidity cotton will give better feeling because it absorbs and the, the it releases. Next is the another phenomena which is cleanliness. Cleanliness is a feeling of discomfort and it is related with the heat loss and clamminess and heat loss basically it is linked with the high activity, because we feel clamminess at the high activity level. Okay. In transient humidity condition the hygroscopic fiber can absorb or dissolve moisture from or to the surrounding environment okay. that is the uh, transient condition the hygroscopic fiber can release the moisture to the environment depending on the humidity level or it can absorb. Okay. This can delay the moisture change in the clothing microclimate that we have discussed it, it will absorb the moisture and it will delay the moisture change in the mi microclimate. So, thus the de it delays the clamminess. So, that means, if we wear a fabric made of hygroscopic fiber like cotton and we are going to a an environment which is highly humid. So, two fabrics are there one is cotton another is say polyester. So, cotton fabric as it is it absorbs moisture. So, it will absorb keep on absorbing moisture from the environment so from the microclimate. So, it absorbs the moisture microclimate from the microclimate at least for some time it is trying to keep the microclimate dry irrespective of the fact that the outside humidity is high. That means, a person when he is coming from a dry humidity to uh, high humid area saturated humid area he will not immediately feel clamminess, he will not immediately feel dampness. That means, it is basically it delays the process, but in case of polyester he will start immediately start feeling the clamminess. That means, it delay it is it cannot delay. Okay. So, for hygroscopic fabric 
it actually delays the climbing sensor. So, he will for some time like wool fiber, for he is if he is wearing wool cloth made of wool, he will not immediately feel climbing he will take time to feel. Okay. Theoretically this effect often acts as buffer against sudden humidity change in favor of the wearer. So, he if he is suddenly going out for some time in humid area that means, it is suggested that he if he is going to a hot and humid climate he should wear a cloth made of the um, hygroscopic fiber. So, that at least he will not feel uncomfortable for some time. The moisture built up at the inner fabric surface facing the sweating skin is very slow in case of fabric made of hygroscopy. So, that moisture built up that means, he is it, it is that fabric is actually abs absorbing the moisture. So, moisture built up will be slow and in case of polyester the moisture built up at that high humidity condition will be high. So, that means, it will delay the, the moisture built up condition that is it's, it acts as buffering okay. uh, buffering from climbiness. Climbiness means when the humidity is high. So, uh, there is one uh, uh, study where we are trial study was uh, conducted, the temperature was kept at uh, 28 degree Celsius at 30 percent relative humidity and the person was actually the uh, volunteers were asked to walk on a treadmill at a certain speed okay. and the test was conducted up to 40 minute time. Now, what we are observing the dotted line it is a wool okay. and this is a polyester this solid line is polyester this is polyester solid line which is a. What that is does it show the climbiness sensation rating actually is high in case of polyester the reason we have which we have already discussed in comparison to wool the polyester clothing actually that it the evaporation limit reaches faster because polyester is not absorbing it has to actually immediately release the moisture so that's how so it's not it's not able to absorb really reduce the humidity in the microclimate so, microclimate is uh, humidity is high and the climbiness sensation is high. So, the wool garments however, took up significantly more sweat than polyester garment. Correspondingly, uh, the correspondingly the subject reported feeling less clammy when he is wearing wool particularly in uh, between uh, 10 minute to 30 minute where the difference is high. Okay. So, we will stop here, we will continue this uh, discussion in the uh, next talk till then thank you.